after yet another hideous day for the averages. I say it's time to circle back to some powerful secular growth themes that will keep working regardless of what happens to the Chinese, the currency, the Fed. Which brings me to Charles River Lab, CRL, the contract research organization that provides universities and biopharma businesses with everything they need to discover new drugs and conduct early stage clinical trials, including the right kind of lab rats and mice needed for safety testing and eggs. We spend a lot of time talking about all the amazing compounds being developed by pharma and biotech companies, but regardless of which drugs end up winning, they all need someone like Charles River to get through the early stages of the FDA approval process, find out what's go and no-go. That's why I like to think of this company as an arms dealer to the entire industry. Charles River just reported a solid quarter a week and a half ago, company raising its full-year sales and earnings guidance, in part thanks to their $212 million acquisition of Celsius International. That's a provider of rapid bacterial detection systems in a deal that was announced early last month. Now, the stock has given us a gain of nearly 10% since we last spoke to the CEO mid-January, although it's down more than nine bucks from its all-time high in March. This could be an opportunity. Let's check in with Jim Foster, the chairman, president, and CEO of Charles River Labs, hear more about his company's prospects. Mr. Foster, welcome back to Mad Money. Good to see you, Jim. Nice to be here, Jim. All right, now, I got to start with something that I read. I, maybe I'm too positive a guy, but when I heard you were opening up the old Shrewsbury plant, in other words, that you have so much business that you need to have more uh, factory floor, I thought it was terrific. The analysts are all questioning whether that's too aggressive and maybe you're too bullish. Make some sense of this for me. We had our analyst day today. In fact, I just came from there and we had a little chat with the analysts about that because I was very surprised in our call that people weren't thrilled with this. <laughs> so, who has, uh, most companies have, do not have a, a, some, they have a demand problem. I was really surprised. So our space is essentially full everywhere else. Okay. We have this huge facility 45 minutes from Cambridge, Massachusetts, the center of biotech research. Right. Um, it's closed. We had to close it because um, in the economic pullback in 08, there just simply wasn't enough work from the pharmaceutical industry. And now we have this incredible asset close by to major pharma and biotech companies that we need. So we um, made this great announcement, which we made again today. I do think people get it now. We're going to open it a uh, portion at a time so we don't have too much capacity. I think their reaction was the last time there was an inversion between capacity and pricing, and, and that was a problem. So people were worried a little bit about the price. So we're going to open it very rationally. We're going to open it in stages as the demand uh, improves, and we're thrilled about it. Oh, Jim, I, I've got to tell you, we've had many immunotherapy companies, and we have a lot of therapy, a lot of companies coming. on. Many of them are in Boston area. Sure. I mean, where else is the work going to get done? I mean, to me, the question is, is will that new facility actually be, will that old refurbished facility be able to handle all the business that comes from all these IPOs that we've seen, where everybody's flush and they want to do more research? Yeah, I think that... Uh, given the choice, biotech, look, biotech will go where the work is done best, but they'll always go where it's done more proximate, if possible. So they'll, they're going to love to drive to this facility. They're going to like to be there with the study directors and participate in the, in, the, um, in the drug development process and think of the site as an extension of their own facilities, which is, which is why we build these sites all over the place. So, we're really enthused about the growth potential. It's a big facility. It has some growth uh, potential for years, I think. Um, I hope, uh, as you say, I hope it gets filled up faster. But um, um, we're really thrilled about okay, it. Okay, yesterday we had a company called Innovio on. Now, I know you can't sp speak specifically about individual companies, but they signed a big deal with AstraZeneca. You have a big deal with AstraZeneca. It would seem to me that this is the kind of company working on vaccines. Um, that it, AstraZeneca turns to you to see whether something works or doesn't work with this new partnership. But I think the partnership is very significant. You should tell people about it. Uh, yeah, the AZ deal is one that we're very, very excited about. We did a three-year deal with them three years ago. Um, it was done at a time when they were contemplating shutting a facility in Sweden, I think. So they shut a facility. This is a time I had just met with the head of R&D and said, you know, we do all this outsourcing work. We would love to have a bigger relationship with you. He said, well, let me think about it. He called me the next day, actually, and said, would like to talk to you because you could tell they were, had been contemplating this. They actually shut a facility, reduced their staff, and moved the work uh, to us. We just signed a five-year deal with them. So we're doing all of the safety testing, the drug safety testing, and the early work before the safety testing. And really, the go and no-go decisions that they need to make, they will make by utilizing our side. Okay, last question. Is that uh, uh, pretty much a exemplar of what you're looking for, or is, uh, or is that enough? I mean, because I know there's a lot of other big drug companies that seem like that you could do that for. We have, uh, we have uh, 
We have deals with the majority of all the drug companies. They're not all multi-year. We, we like them different structures for different size companies. Fair enough. Okay. That's Jim Foster, Chairman, President, and CEO of Charles River Labs, who has a high-quality problem. Too much demand for his facilities. I say I like this stock right here. Stick with Kramer. Booyah! Jim Kramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.